All right, so mid-chapter review. Um, I will post the link to this packet in the comment section below, or not comment section, description section, and that way you can print it off and do it ahead of time and follow me later, or you can just follow me through these now. And let's get started. Where will this equation have a local max and a local min? Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is turn on calculator and graph it. Okay, so we can see here that it goes like this, okay, which follows our end behavior. So remember, if, uh, if the lead coefficient is positive, if it's positive, right side is up, if it's negative, right side is down. And then you look to the lead power. If it's even, left follows the right side. And if it's odd, left is opposite the right side, okay? So since this is positive and even, right side ends up and left side ends up. Okay, so now we have to use our calculator and find where the local max and the local mins are. So here we have a local min, right? And here we also have a local min, and here we have a local max, okay? So your calculator is gonna be different. I know mine is really old. So we're going to go to more and then math, and then here's F min and F max. So let's go to F min, left bound. All right, it's way over there and I'm not gonna use my little arrow keys to do that. So I'm just gonna say one, two, three, four, five. Let's just do negative five for our left bound. And our right bound, I'm just gonna say one. And guess, oh, I meant negative one, but mm, shoot. Well, let's see if it works. Oh, good, it worked. All right, so we have, switch pencils. So we have our X value is negative 3.9 and the Y value is negative 169.3. All right, so now let's find our next one, F max. So left bound, let's say negative one. All right, and then our right bound, let's do one again. Yes, yes. So our maximum is 0.5 and negative 3.1. And then our last min. So this one I can use my little arrow keys. So 1.2 and negative 4.2. Okay, so where do we have a local max? So our max is at 1.2, negative 4.2. So depending on how the question is being asked, you can say we have a max at x equals 2.1 with a max value of negative 4.2 because remember max and min we're looking for the y value now for a min remember we have two so negative 3.9 negative 169.3 and 0.5 negative 3.1 and then you'd write it out uh, x equals this or minimum value is that x equals this minimum value is that just depending on how the question is worded and what your answer choices are okay so a polynomial has zeros at three 
or has a zero at three minus two i and has real zeros at x equals negative two and x equals six. If all the zeros have a multiplicity of one, what is the degree of a polynomial? Okay, so recall zeros and imaginaries. If you have a negative imaginary one, you're also gonna have a positive one. So not only do we have a zero at three minus two i, we have another one at x equals three plus two i. Okay, then we also have one at x equals negative two and x equals six. So if all of these have a multiplicity of one, that means there's only one. So our degree is gonna be one, two, three, four, x to the power of four. The time it takes an apple to hit the ground from a tree is modeled by this equation. What height would it take an apple six seconds to hit the ground? All right, so this is time, this is height. So six equals two thirds h squared. All right, so now we're just solving for h. So the first step we're gonna do is multiply both sides by three halves. All right, so that cancels. So two goes into six three times, three times three, nine equals h squared and then we're gonna square root both sides. So plus and minus three equals h. Now we're dealing with height and time. So we're not gonna have negative time, nor are we gonna have negative height because it's gonna hit the ground and it's gonna stop. So it's like it's not gonna go underneath. So we're gonna get rid of our negative choice. So our height is three. Find the polynomial when the graph has a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative two and a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. Okay, so the first thing we remember is that in order to get a vertical asymptote, you do zeros of the denominator. Okay, so y or f of x, it doesn't matter. So we're gonna have at x equals zero, so that's just x. We also have one at x equals five, but remember we have to subtract that over to get the factor, okay? So x minus five. Now for the horizontal asymptote, remember we're looking at degree of the numerator versus the degree of the denominator, okay? So if it's greater, there's none, but check for the slant. If it's less than, you have one at y equals zero. And if it's equal to, you divide the lead coefficients, okay? So since we have one at y equals negative two, well, we have one, so no. It's not at zero, so no. So we know the lead coefficients are equal. So we have two x's here, so we need to put an x squared up here right? Because once you multiply this out, our total degree in the denominator is going to be two. All right. So now we need to address the horizontal asymptote value. So since it's negative two, we just know that's negative two over one. So we just plop in a negative two there and that's it. What interval is this equation increasing and decreasing? Let's first use our end behavior rules. So we know it's gonna be a power of three because we've got two x's here because the multiplicity of this factor is two. Multiplicity of this factor is one, so we've got one, two, three. So it's x cubed, and our lead coefficient is going to be positive. So again, lead coefficient is positive, right side is up. If the lead power is odd, the left side is gonna go opposite the right side. So our end behavior is down, okay? And so now let's talk about the actual zeros. Our zero here is x equals negative four, and our zero here is x equals three. Since the multiplicity of this one is odd, it's gonna go through. Since the multiplicity of this one is even, it's going to bounce. Okay, so one, two, three, 
one, two, three, four. So we know it starts down here, goes through four, bounces at three, and ends up. Okay, so there's a general rough draft of what our graph is gonna look like, okay? So now we need to find out when it's increasing and when it's decreasing. So if you notice, it's increasing. So remember, we're talking about the Y value as we go across the domain. So starting left to right is the Y increasing or decreasing. So it's increasing from here to here, okay? Then it's decreasing from here to here. And then it increases again from here to here, all right, and up. Okay, so now we need to find out these values, right? Now, we already know this value, which is perfect because this is x equals 3. Now we need to find this value. Okay, so now we know that max value is going to happen up here, way up here somewhere, okay? So more math, F max, because we're looking for the maximum. Our left bound, okay, it's over here, so let's do one, two, three, oh yeah, negative four. And our right bound, let's just say is three, so we get that whole thing. All right, so our maximum is, oh, is negative 1.7 and 50.8, okay? So now where's our graph increasing? It's increasing from negative infinity to negative 1.7 union because we've got two places where it's increasing. It starts at three and goes to positive infinity. Now decreasing from negative 1.7 to three. Okay, use the factor theorem to determine which of the following is a factor of our equation. So we have x minus 9, x plus 9, and that's supposed to be x plus 4, and x minus 4. Okay, so you have two ways to do this. First, you can use your graphing calculator. Second, you can use synthetic division. Okay, since it's not telling us which way to do it, I'm going to do the nice easy way and use the calculator. All right, now let's look at where our actual zeros are, okay? So we have one, two, three, and four. So we have negative four, three, and, or negative three, and positive three. Now, we have to be reminded these are the factors, okay? So what is the actual zero? So this will be positive nine, this will be negative nine, this will be negative four, and this one will be positive four. So since we have a negative four here, it's C, okay? Now, if you were wanting to do synthetic division, you would set it up as negative four, and then just the, co the coefficients, one, four, negative nine, negative 36, Remember the first one just comes down, one times negative four, add straight down, 
zero times negative four, add straight down, negative nine times negative four, positive 36. And if this is zero, it is a factor or a root. Okay, a polynomial has zeros at x equals negative four, zero, and two. Find the polynomial in expanded form. All right, so first we need to start with x equals zero, x equals negative four, and x equals two, okay? Now from here we make them factors, so we need to make it these equal to zero because this one already is. So we're gonna add the four over and subtract the two over. Okay, now we have our factors. So now we have x, x plus four, x minus two, and now we just foil everything together. So first I'm gonna distribute this x. Okay, now foil. So we have x cubed minus two x squared plus four x squared minus eight x. Combine like terms. Okay, so here is our polynomial in expanded form. Okay, now divide the polynomial by this to create a rational function in simplest factored form. Okay, so first we need to do, let's go back to our factored form, all right, of the top one, x, x plus four, x minus two, and first we need to factor this one, all right? So x squared plus three, x minus four. Okay, what are factors of negative four that add to three? So that would be four and negative one. So our factors are x plus four, x minus one. And I'll link the video that I did on factoring um, in this video and also in the description box. Okay, so now we put that in the denominator. Okay, now we notice these cancel. All right, so even though they cancel, don't forget, we have to state we have a whole at x equals negative four. Okay, because our factor is x plus four subtracted over to make x equals four, or negative four. Okay, so g of x is x, x minus 2 over x minus 1. Now find the slant asymptote. So first we're going to have to distribute this out. Oh. Okay, and now we do long division. So the first thing you're going to do, or how I do long division, is what do we need to multiply x by to get x squared? So that will be x. Some people also say x squared divided by x gives you x. Okay, you can do it either way. Whichever way makes the most sense to you. So x times x gives us positive x squared. When we pull it under, we change the sign. So negative x squared. So x times negative 1 negative x, pull it under, change the sign, positive x. Okay, that cancels, and we're left with a negative x. Since we still have x, we need to add the zero. Okay, what are we multiplying x by to get negative x? Negative one. Again, if you want to think of it this way, negative x divided by x gives you negative one. So negative one, oh, pull that zero down. Negative one times x is negative x. Pull it under, change the sign, positive x. Negative one times negative one, positive one. Pull it under, change the sign, negative one. That cancels, we're left with a negative one. And now when we're doing slant asymptotes, remember we just drop the remainder. And our slant asymptote is is what's up here. So y equals x minus 1 is our slant asymptote. Okay, 
So last part, lists all locations and types of discontinuities. So remember, we have that hole at x equals negative 4. So first, we have a hole at x equals negative 4. Then we have a slant asymptote, or yeah, slant asymptote at y equals x minus 1. And we also have a vertical asymptote, because remember, we still have a denominator at x equals 1. Okay, for this next one, you will have to forgive my storytelling. I am a math person. I do not do words. So, but you get the gist. So, here's an equation. And it's supposed to model the power absorbed during daylight hours at a city in Alaska because it comes out to be only four hours of daylight. So where are you going to get that? Closer to the poles. So that's why I chose Alaska. Anywho, so let's get to this. So T is the total hours of sunlight or daylight and P of T represents the units of power that the solar panels will produce. Okay, so first we need to find the domain. So let's just plug this in real quick. Okay, so with these equations, since we're dealing with time, we know we're not going to have any negative time, right? And also, since we're dealing with power being produced, we're only going to stay in the positive on the, on the y-axis because the, sun, the solar panels themselves are not going to be using power when the sun goes down. It's just that they're not going to be producing any power. So really, our domain is only going to go from zero to whatever this root is. And let's find out what that is real quick. Okay, 4.2. So our domain is going to go from zero to 4.2, okay? And now the reason we're gonna use brackets is because it actually exists at zero. So if you go, go to zero, see it actually exists at zero. And then we just saw we had the other root at 4.2, okay? So that is our domain. What is the greatest, oh, and if they ask to explain it, you'll just write exactly what we were talking about. What is the greatest unit of power the panels will produce? And at what time will this happen? Okay, so we go back to our calculator. And now since it's talking about the greatest unit of power, we know we're gonna be talking about a local max. All right? So basically we're finding the vertex right there. So left bound, yes. And right bound, let's do 4.2. All right, so our local max is 1. Point, uh, let's say 27 and 1.57. Okay, so we know when t equals 1.27, so after one and a quarter hours of sunlight, the panels will produce, so p of t is 1.57. So the panels will, will produce 1.57 units of power.